another exciting episode of Art Check. My name is Anne Masharia. In today's episode, our focus is on e-waste. By e-waste, I mean electronic waste, waste from your phones, as well as the different electronic machines you use at household level. We make our journey to We Center, a company that is not only on a mission to make or provide a safer environment, but also deals with electronic waste. We Center recycles e-waste for government, companies, institutions and individuals. We Center ensures this is done in an environmental friendly manner. In absence of We Center, this e-waste would otherwise end up in the environment, thus causing degradation of the same and harm to human health. So this is our receiving area. Mm -hmm. Once we receive e-waste, it comes in uh, different types and uh, different mix. Mm -hmm. After receiving, we do the sorting, and then we weigh. We take this. We do the sorting and then the weighing. In the weighing, we take the cereal, the make, the model, and the weight of each particular item that has been received. Mm -hmm. After doing that, we move to the dismantling table. On the dismantling table, mm -hmm. <coughs> what we do is uh, we totally dismantle the equipment, disassemble the equipment, separation of plastics, metal, mm -hmm. cables, um, anything, so that it's totally dismantled. As you can see, these are just a mix of total uh, different types of uh, fractions or items, and uh, the team here is totally dismantling. Then after dismantling, all the circuit boards, motherboards, we have where we keep them here together. Uh, the drives, hard drives, keep them together there. Uh, for the floppy drives, we keep them together there, the cable and the uh, power supplies. So after sorting them like that, each of these fractions are separately handled. Mm -hmm. uh, for the plastics, all types of plastics go together and then the iron and steel also go together. Okay. Then for the small, small items, uh, other smaller items are kept uh, in this store. Uh, we have capacitors, we have screws, bolts, fans, and adapters, and other small, small items. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what I was to ask you, how much time does it take uh, to dismantle this? How long does it take? Or it, does, it depends on someone's speed? Uh, it depends on two things. One, some machines or items are very complex. For example, if you have a printer like this one, to dismantle one like this, it can even take somebody maybe uh, two or three hours. Yeah. Because it has uh, different parts. But small items like this, this can only take maybe 20 to 30 minutes for the whole thing. For the whole thing. Yes. And uh, w do you get your, your, your waste from uh, where exactly? Do you, do you have a collecting point? Or do they bring their, the waste here? Um, yes, uh, we do both collection from uh, clients mm -hmm. or disposers and also others bring them here. We don't have our own collection points. Uh, we work with uh, different institutions. So we have, um, we work with, we've partnered with government. Mm -hmm. So they've given us um, uh, office space in some of their facilities mm -hmm. in the region, in, uh, in Kenya. So we have an office in Mombasa, we have another one in Kisumu, another uh, one in Western Kenya, uh, Garissa. So we have several, several places in the country, mm -hmm. and those act as partly as our collection points. Also, we work with um, other um, partners like Safaricom. Mm -hmm. They've opened up their Safaricom outlets, so people can take their e-waste there and drop them there then Safari Combo will make sure it is safely delivered to us. Okay, yes. so specifically you're dealing with e-waste. Why e-waste? Uh, electronic waste uh, is a waste stream that never existed about 20 to 25 years ago. Exactly. But now it is uh, one of the fastest growing waste streams in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem is not just that it is fast, but it is also being contributed mostly because of the manufacturers. Yeah. And it's also, uh, we also want to look at the dangers associated with uh, electronic waste. Electronics, when they are being manufactured, they are embedded in them uh, heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium, and all these heavy metals, unless they are properly extracted, mm -hmm. uh, they end up in the environment. Yeah. And that is the reason that we took upon ourselves and said, let's move on this direction to make mm -hmm. sure that we have a clean environment 
and public uh, safety is uh, catered. Okay. Yeah. Do you experience any challenges uh, when it comes to having such kind of, you know, uh, a program or a, a project like this? What are the challenges? Uh, challenges are there because yeah. this being a new waste stream, uh, we have many fractions which cannot be handled locally. Yeah. Number one, so we have to work with or look for partners who can safely dispose them. So currently we are working with partners in Europe, Belgium, Netherlands, Finland, and Germany. Uh, those are the facilities that one, have been uh, certified by the government. Number two, they have capability and capacity to handle any fraction that we send to them. Okay. So that is number one. Uh, we don't have in the country, not just Kenya, but also in Africa, capability to safely extract the heavy metals and dispose them. Number two, uh, this being a new waste stream area, uh, we don't have uh, a proper legal mechanism, mm -hmm. a legal framework. Mm -hmm. we are, we, now we already have the, um, the MCA Act, and under the MCA Act we have the waste management regulations. E-waste is categorized as uh, hazardous waste. Yeah. Um, so without a standalone law, so it makes it a bit not clear on how to handle electronics. However, NEMA with other stakeholders of which uh, the WIS Center was part of it, we developed um, the uh, e-waste management uh, uh, guidelines. These are just guidelines, they are not enforceable. So they're just guidelines for any disposer to know how to dispose of their e-waste. Um, Currently, we worked with the government again mm -hmm. to come up with a new bill. There was a one bill in 2013 on e-waste. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, in government, things have to go in the long process. So that bill never went through up to today. So there's that pending bill on e-waste. So number two, two things. The first one is uh, the capacity as a challenge. Number two. This being a new waste stream, the government did not envision that we might have a lot of e-waste coming in. Mm -hmm. So the legal framework also has been missing. Then number three, uh, the technical capability or capacity to handle this waste stream, uh, not just Kenya, but in Africa, is limited. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to work with other partners outside the country. That means that some of the fractions with Precious metals, rare earth metals, mm -hmm. we have exported them. So means we will we'll only gain in foreign exchange, yeah. but means that we have already exported them. Okay. But if we could have um, capability or capacity to handle this locally, then it means all these uh, rare earth metals could be extracted. This is called urban mining, could be extracted and then sold out again. All right, Coral Sep, if I could just uh, make you uh, come back to here. After making and sorting and everything, every project, what happens after that? So after we've done sorting, actually we do the sorting because of two things. One, this e-waste, as I mentioned earlier, during manufacturing, there are some of the fractions or elements mm -hmm. with heavy metals. Okay. So we dismantle, then separate those heavy metals I mean, elements or fractions that have the heavy metals. Mm -hmm. So that uh, these heavy metals or fractions that have the heavy metals are handled separately. Um, basically, e-waste can be categorized in two broad categories, mm -hmm. the non-hazardous and the hazardous. The hazardous has to be uh, safely disposed and mm -hmm. handled, both locally and internationally. For the non-hazardous, some of it can be handled locally, and, but whatever cannot be handled locally has to be exported. Okay. So that's the reason of first the segregation of these uh, different fractions. Okay, yeah. they can be able, to, uh, they can be used to make new products. Yes, we can be able to have some of the fractions uh, extracted and make other byproducts. Okay. Because, like for example, we have plastics. Plastics can be. Uh, shredded, molded, yeah. and then we have plastic poles. The poles can be used for fencing. They can also be used for, um, like the government is country, currently, they are using it for um, uh, the road signage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, because Sethi also, you know, with the wisdom that you have, you yeah. know, uh, this, is there something we can do? Because e-waste is, uh, is, a, is a kind of waste that is with the new technology. You know, we have to look for ways of managing this kind of waste. What should we do and how are we doing it? Mm, 
The biggest problem we have is two. One is uh, all uh, consumers of electrical and electronic items uh -huh. have a big appetite. If you see something new in the market, we leave the old one and get a new one. Yeah. That's one problem. The second problem is the manufacturers. Most manufacturers, they manufacture equipment that has no life. Yeah. Or the lifespan is very short. So the obsolescence level of most of the equipment we buy is very short. Uh -huh. So they help us create more uh, waste. Yeah. And that in turn also brings the issue of where can we get the items to be repaired. So if an item you take to a fundi or somebody who can repair, mm -hmm. but they don't have the spares to repair, mm -hmm. it means your equipment ends up becoming obsolete. Exactly. Or the equipment you go and ask for repair, and the cost of just one small part is almost the equivalent price of a new one. So you just dump the old one and get a new one. All right. Yeah. So, and uh, you know, may, uh, with, with the current, uh, I, I'll always tell you, this is the first time I've come up with, a, you know, I've seen, I've, I made a visit to a centre that makes, uh, that recycles e-waste. Is it something we should adopt? E-waste management? Yeah. Um, we have no change like as a country. All of us, one, we need to be, take, be responsible of all types of waste that we generate. Yeah. And secondly, because of the um, dangers posed or hazards posed by improper disposal, it is something that Every citizen must take uh, proactive action to make sure safe, uh, safe disposal of e-waste. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so your parting shot, what would you say? Um, one is to say that we only have one planet and we have to take care of it. To take care of it is to take responsibility of our waste. Yeah. So it's my responsibility to make sure my, the waste I, dis uh, I generate, I safely dispose it of. All right. Many thanks, Ty. Thank sir. you very I much. I do appreciate Pleasure. Your, uh, I've, you know, the way you're taking care of your guys. You guys are going, doing a great job, mm -hmm. and we appreciate the effort you're making to make the planet a better place. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Now you have a rough idea what happens at the receiving point to the end point, but we have much more.